Good morning and welcome to Patriot Radio News Hour. It is Thursday and, man, where does all the time go? Uh, the 7th day of October already. I'm Joe Jacobin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group, and our toll-free number, 800 to the website at allamericangold.com, and we've... Uh, Getting our transmitter problems behind us here. We 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 uh, we're running at about half power right now. We may be fully back before the end of the day. The parts that we were expecting tomorrow are going to be here today. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Uh, joined like I am every day, my partner in crime, the man that's in charge of Colorado, Jason Walker. Jason, good morning, and how you doing? I'm better today. Yeah, it's a uh, <laughs> had a couple of, <laughs> couple of low energy days. I don't know if anyone out there is like me, but uh, sometimes you can feel something coming on, and so you you jump into uh, fix yourself up mode. You know, clean up your lifestyle and, and uh, try to try to ward off what it is. And I had a couple of days like that. I, I was able to fight through and get things done, but today I'm a whole lot better. So everybody seems to be fighting a little bit of seasonal stuff, uh, Joe. Well, you know what, the weather's starting to change, right? You know, here in the morning in Phoenix. Uh, it's a little cooler outside. I don't need to run the air conditioner on the way to work, as an example. Uh, still, a, it's a, you know in the 90s still during the day, but I'm telling you what, it is uh, really, really nice weather out here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suck it up and play around at golf tomorrow afternoon, and we'll see how that goes. I, I normally, uh, when the prices get too high, that's when I, when I bail on it, but... Uh, my buddy had a deal at a course, so we're going to enjoy some of this great weather. It's always, uh, it's our time to brag now when uh, the weather turns here and we get out of those 100 plus days. Uh, I've had a ton of rain as well here, so uh, all in all, it, it's a pretty damn good day out. Speaking of good day, hey, the Dow's up 500 points. Yes. yes I saw that. Yes, up 500, down 500, up 500, down 500. We've seen this before. This is this. These are things that happen uh, at, at the end of cycles, uh, where where the Dow gets a little schizophrenic. Not sure what it's supposed to do uh, from one day to the next. But today, today's kind of a, I'll call it a garbage rally. Uh, the 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 big news is that they've made an agreement on the debt ceiling. Oh. Not to actually do anything other than, you know what, we can't come to an agreement before we run out of money, so they extended it, Jason. So now the new debt ceiling is going to be December 3rd. Oh. Uh, essentially what they did is they, they have allowed the Treasury to borrow another $500 billion. And that's how fast $500 billion goes. Isn't that that raising, doesn't even give you that, that doesn't even give you two months, you know. Is that raising the debt ceiling? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's well, they, they did, but but it wasn't one of these. You know, and, and it's so funny because they used to raise it by a number, because that would make sense. You know, hey, you know what? We're at twenty eight trillion, twenty nine trillion. Uh, we should probably take another check here at thirty trillion. Well, the problem is we, we spend money so fast now that that's not really prudent. Because, you know, let's just say they, 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 they went to $30 trillion. Well, the debt ceiling, we'd hit the debt ceiling like in January. You know, so that, that's not going to work. So now they've been going to dates. In other words, we're going to spend as much as we want right up until this date. And then we'll talk about it. And then what they're going to do is just extend it anyway. You know, nothing actually good ever comes out of this. I have yet to hear one person say, hey, I got an idea. Maybe, I know it's crazy talk, but maybe we should shrink the government a little bit. right? Maybe we should spend a little less money. Nobody is saying that. Matter of fact, what are they arguing about right now? How much more money are we going to spend is what they're arguing about, right? They, they've got the two infrastructure bills, the regular infrastructure bill and the quote-unquote human infrastructure bill. 
The regular infrastructure bill, they've already got that done. Hey, we're going to spend another trillion, $1.2 trillion on that one. The human infrastructure bill, we don't know how much they're going to spend. 1.5 to 3.5. I'm going to do the really uh, difficult thing and say, oh, well, hmm. how about 2.5? That's probably where it's going to be, somewhere between 2 and 2.5 trillion. So they're arguing about, hey, we've got to raise the debt ceiling. And how much more debt and how much more money do we want to spend versus, hey, maybe we should spend a little less, Jason. Yeah, you know, my favorite president, uh, Andrew Jackson, uh, he got elected in 1828 officially, and then he took office in 1829. You know what he did in his first year? He, he cut 10% of the government, just fired him. <laughs> and then paid off the national debt. Yeah, 10,000 employees. So there, there was only 10,000 federal employees back in 1829, and he, he cut 1,000 of them, just cut them right out, just said, you're done, out. We don't need you. <laughs> I don't even know. I'm scared to look. That would, I, if I would have known you, would, I would have looked. You know, I wonder how many federal employees there are. It's in the Maybe millions. Maybe during the break, if I've got time, I'll punch it up. But when we get back, I've got another another person smarter than me saying get ready for the 1970s all over again and not just with what was happening there but also in gold prices and what's going to happen uh we're going to do that we'll talk about jobless claims and uh well, a whole bunch of other stuff Patriot radio news hour don't touch it up Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Patriot Radio News Hour. The question was, how many federal employees do we have today? So Jason was saying, hey, back in the day, Andrew Jackson's president, there was ten thousand. Eighteen twenty nine. And he let go of a thousand of them, and then paid off the national debt. Uh, right now, the, num- the, the number stands at 9.1 million. <laughs> I, I, th- I thought it was millions, Joe. <laughs> this includes, I'll break it down. Oh, no. Holy I'll break cow. it down now. Hold on. <laughs> 2.1 million federal employees. 4.1 million contract employees. So think about this. We have twice as many contractors as we do in federal employees. Kind of kind of ironic, isn't it? Right? Because, again, they get to put the contract employee in a different bucket. Sounds like Evergrande. Right? Yeah, just, hey, we're just hiding stuff. You know, it, it's like the, uh, the Clinton era budget surpluses. Evergr- right? Evergrande. Well, you know, le- right bucket, left bucket, well, it's That's fine. Right. Double count. That housing crash that happened over there in China, Evergrande has 200,000 employees and 4 million uh, contractors. 4 million contractors. Yeah. Well, I guess on that part, you know, probably does make sense, right? Because they're building commercial buildings, so they probably do have a lot of contractors out there. What's the, go- what, this what's the, one, what's the government trying. building, Joe? What's, what is our government building? Right. Need- <laughs> 2.1 million federal employees, 4.1 contract employees. 1.2 million grant employees. Oh, yeah. So, you know, you kind of... And then there's 1.3 million, uh, what they say is active duty military. And then another half a million postal employees. Now, why uh, would that be in a different bucket? I don't know, but... <laughs> 3% of America works for the federal government. 3 <laughs> Actually, you know what? Actually, you you are you are correct in in three percent of Americans, six percent of actual working Americans. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. So, you have to double so you it. figure, you know, we got about three hundred thirty million people wow. in the country. The workforce is about one hundred sixty million. You know, so so yeah, it it's. <laughs> and I'm not going to disparage all government workers, but. I don't think they work quite as hard as the private sector, Joe. I think these are the these are relaxed well, workers. I, 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 this isn't a knock on the workers at all. I mean, it's not their fault. I mean, it used to be, you know, especially early on when I was when I was going into the workforce, 
and you know back then you, you get you know your parents would give you advice your, your relatives uh you know maybe your your best friend's dad whatever the case may be government job was way down the list you don't want that job it pays bad yeah you get you know time off and this and that and holidays but it it was viewed as a lesser job and depending on what the government's doing it, it may be insecure you know you don't know what republican or democrat's going to get elected and you, you just might right. get cut you could just get cut now nothing gets that's cut. like the, the, that <laughs> job that's the coveted job oh i work for the government how now, lucky are you now it's job security <laughs> you know it, and it's just just you, know, you never know where this show is going to go. I had no intentions of talking about it, but we bring it up. We're talking about debt limits. We're talking about spending. We're talking about how big is this government. And think about what Biden wants to do. Bigger. He wants to go bigger. Look, look at the places he... IRS. That's where... You know, one of his big ones. He, he wants to, like, double and triple the size of the IRS. And this guy... Uh, it, He's a scary, scary individual because uh, more and more you hear these little leaks about how this guy's not in charge. He's just he's just the puppet out there. Uh, but uh, there was a, a really good article uh, on dollarcollapse.com, uh, and it was uh, John Rubino uh, was the guy that did it. We've done a lot of his stuff. Uh, you can also find it. Uh, at, on uh, you know at least uh, a condensed version of it on zero hedge uh, but we're we're talking about hey where's gold going what, what's up for the the metal here and he starts drawing these comparisons to the 1970s and we've talked a lot about this. And he actually goes a, even further. So it's, it's really, really interesting. And talking about how gold moves. It, and Jason and I know this. And a, and a lot of our smarter listeners know this. Gold moves very, very quickly. Followed by long stretches of you know, I'll say range bound trade. Look at look at this year. Take take this year, twenty twenty one. Gold is is really just sitting between say sixteen seventy and eighteen thirty. Right now, you know, like today, seventeen sixty really hasn't done a lot. But you know, we had that big fall. Gold hit twenty one hundred. In 2020, fell real quick and, and is stagnated here. But this is how gold markets run. And then the next leg up, boom. Right, the next time we're going to talk about the next leg up in gold, we're going to be talking 3,000, and people are going to go, "What happened? 4,000? What happened?" And then you're going to have a stretch in the 70s. There was only really two separate bull markets in gold. The first one was in the early 70s. Right? We went off the gold standard. Uh, we had the energy crisis, all that stuff. Followed by 1975, this year of correction. Right? Very similar to what we've seen. You know, take the end of 2020 and 2021, same thing, very similar pattern. And then another huge explosion to the upside for the rest of the 70s. And he goes in and says, let's, let's look at some similarities, Jason. The first one he points out to a bungled axis, exit from a pointless and costly war. Obviously referring today to Afghanistan. What were we talking about in the 70s? Vietnam. That's right. Right? You know, the pictures of helicopters on rooftops and all of that stuff. Rising inflation due to excessive debt 
an artificially easy money. That's pretty easy, right? Yep. Check that box. By, right, but, and again, just I'll add, go a Joe, step for, Just to add, ahead, just, the, the Afghanistan war for the 20 years averaged $300 million a day spending, and that just got shut off. Wow, $300 million a day? Per day for the entire 20 years. And you know what? Here's the funny thing. Jason, I just got so, shut off. No, it didn't. They're just going to spend it somewhere else. Right, but they have to they have right. to stuff it somewhere, Joe. Where are they going to stuff right, it? Stu- which can cause, right. which is going to cause what you're talking about right now, which is going to cause these problems. Where else are we going to stuff it? Cause the inflation problems. Absolutely. We exited Vietnam. Now we're exiting uh, Afghanistan. What problems can happen economically? And you're you're you're, you're mapping it out. He, here's the next one that that this one is this is our biggest problem. So think about this. Yeah, we bungled Afghanistan, and yeah, we've got. Horrible inflation and terrible policy. Leadership that seems less competent and trustworthy every time they speak. Talking about Jimmy Carter, who up until Joe Biden, the weakest president that at least in the modern era, by far, without hands down. And for me, I, I actually think Joe Biden is truly not competent to do the job. There's a difference. His mental capacity is is compromised. In addition to, he's already a typical lifer in Congress who did nothing, right? Passed no bills. Nothing's got his name on it. When, you know, the, the Biden bills don't exist. But... Now he's compromised. We had a horrible Federal Reserve in the 70s as well. And now we look at Jay Powell. Uh, Again, never been a huge ringing endorsement for this guy. Now we've got the Federal Reserve scandal on top of it. And let's face it, every time they open their mouth, no one believes anything they say. Does anyone believe Jay Powell when he says inflation is going to be transitory? Right? I mean, the only cool thing Joe Biden's ever said is, come on, man. I mean, right, Jason? <laughs> well, I guess it depends on how you define transitory. And I think that's where they're going to end up going with it, which is, well, look at the 1970s. Look at all that inflation. But it did end. It was transitory. <laughs> I think that's how they'll do it, Joe. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, the problem is, how long is transitory going to be? That's the and question somebody needs to ask him. It, somebody needs to ask be him. A lot, lo- how a long? lot longer than what they're saying. How about this one? A rising power threat to the U.S. military, and of course, the implications of the dollar's role as the reverse, or uh, as the reserve currency. Now, of course, who was the enemy in the seventies? Russia. Who fast forward to who's the enemy today? China. And let's face it, from an economic standpoint, China's far more capable than Russia ever was. When they just got way more people. Much they bigger. Are, they much are bigger much, economy. Huge economy. Much yeah. Much, there's no can Harrison. Now, militarily, you could argue, hey, Russia was, Russia was, you know, they were a, a, a worthy adversary from a military standpoint. And, and China is racing to this, right? You know, they're, nobody's putting more into their military in China. And to Jason's point yesterday, right, we don't know that they could actually fight at all. But I'll, I'll bring this up. I'll just say this. Uh, they, they, we say that, but we do know, don't we? Do we not? I mean, there was. Do we not remember the Korean War? Yep. It was. It was the Chinese that stopped it in its tracks. So I, you know, I think when push comes to shove, yes, they will be a worthy adversary. But again, the different, the huge difference here, huge. Is the economic might of China 
is so significantly better than what Russia could have ever hoped to have been. I mean, Russia was nothing outside of they, – they were a brutal dictator, military. That was it. They had no real great economy. Uh, they weren't the producer of – the world's producer of things, right? Ru Russia has oil, right? Russia has natural gas, and, and Russia has some other commodities. Uh, but that's about it. And then last but not least, and this is this is new one. Energy crisis, Jason. Right. Right? The 70s, we had the oil embargo. This is far worse than that. And, and Jason and I, uh, you know, and I don't know, how, you know, and I apologize to those of you that, that, that don't go to 1360 and catch the half-empty cup of Joe show. Jason and I do uh, two more hours of radio. But we were kind of talking about how could the whole world seemingly have missed their energy needs. Kind of interesting, isn't it? Pizza Radio News Hour. We'll be right back. Yes, ma'am. Bye, God. Be dark. 800 592 Pizza Radio News Hour. And uh, we're talking about the 70s and the similarities uh, and, and how gold moves. And, and we're, we're seeing a very similar pattern here. You know, you go back, even during the Trump administration, gold was creeping up. You know, it, most people don't realize, you know, from 2015 to, to 2020, uh, the gold price was up, you know, to when it got to its peak, like 80%. It's a lot. Of, it didn't quite double, but almost. Uh, and then, of course, we had a, a that big jump, right? Obviously, the I'll call it the year of COVID. We got the big jump. So we saw very similar in the in the seventies, right? Nineteen seventy three, seventy four, gold really took off. Then we get a pullback, and then you get the the next charge. Uh, and again, the next charge is going to start when they start this tape which is supposedly, allegedly, about a month away. But then think about it. You know, we talked about these similarities, like, you know, the energy crisis. And I'm just like, the whole world missed? China missed? Like China didn't know it was going to need all of this coal and the oil. And by the way, uh, coal freighters, new record high, 80 thousand dollars to get a ship full of coal because they don't have enough uh europe didn't know about it needs nat more natural gas right it, it, it almost defies logic doesn't it jason the only thing that i could think of that makes sense is that because of the inflation uh purchases were no longer being made and that would cause the shortage joe but that's the only thing i could think of that makes sense yeah that they were like wow this is expensive i don't want to pay this price and then they got shocked. That could be, right? The, 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 the only thing that outside of deliberate act is, well, I'm not going to pay double. I'll just wait. We'll wait a few weeks. The price will come down. And a few weeks went by, and the price got more expensive. So then they're like, well, I'm not going to buy extra for the winter. Right. You got a stockpile for the winter. Winter's cold. You you burn more energy. And while you're sitting on there on that money, you know that you, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna wait to buy Joe. I'm gonna I'm gonna sit here with my pile of cash or whatever it is, my, my whatever asset. And then while they're waiting for it to come down, it goes up even more. Now you can buy less. Now you have less to offer. Yeah. And, and, and that's exactly what happened. So what were they doing? Well, we're gonna use what we have, and I'm just gonna buy the bare minimum because again. The price is going to go down. And so they buy the bare minimum. A few more weeks go by. And all of a sudden, it's even more expensive. And this pattern continued over and over. And it wasn't until earlier this week, finally, China said, okay, that's it. We give up. Buy everything we possibly can. Buy every shipment of coal that is available in the marketplace. And now today, all of a sudden, one ship full, just the ship for the 80 grand. 
But think about this now. So uh, let's check the energy crisis box. Have you guys seen the gas pump here in Phoenix? Have you noticed what's happened over the... Uh, it seems like every third day the price goes up again. The cheap, my, my cheap place where I fill up, 330 At my house, 369 and rising. We're paying... Uh, I, I saw something yesterday, Jason, a dollar a gallon more for gas this year than last year. Yeah, that sounds right. It's about the same prices here, too. Dollar a gallon more this year than last year. But think about the things we haven't talked about. We've got a pandemic going on, right, that seemingly will never end. Uh, they're saying we've got a labor shortage, which I don't think we do, right? We don't have a labor shortage. What we have is a pay shortage. Yep. If you're willing to pay enough money that people can live, you'll find workers. Listen, I promise you, when Donald starts paying $25 an hour, they'll have plenty of workers. Supply chain disruptions. Now, the 70s, we had the oil issue. We had that embargo. But this is something we've never seen before. We're seeing now retailers are out there saying, hey, guess what? We're going to have stuff for Christmas, but after Christmas, it's going to be months before we get restocked. And mostly these are you know, like your toy retailers, your sports retailers. We'll see what happens. How about immigration? The chaos at the border. We, we don't even talk about that. I mean, barely ever. I mean, think about this. A good month. 150,000 people cross. That's low. Last month, they were saying that number approached 300,000 in a month. Just absolute chaos. And then you top it off with this, seems like this societal shift, Jason. Away from any form of of rational and disciplined thinking, whether it be our economic policies, right? This Remember modern money theory? What, yeah. what a bunch of crap that was. Uh, any type of rational thinking uh, when it comes to how we handled the pandemic or, or government spending or any of these other things. You know, when you look at it, it's hard to understand how this isn't going to be much, much worse than anything we've seen before. Right. You know, we've got so much more debt now. We've, we've entered uh, this period where common sense and logical thinking got replaced with, I just want to do what feels good. Right, and I liken this to uh, the, uh, the, you know, all of us probably have someone close to us that's had issues with drugs and alcohol. And right now, the, the, this social uh, societal shift is kind of the end of the peak right now where you're, you've watched your friend, his, life, his life's falling apart, and you're just waiting. Oh, this is going to end badly. Right, the guy, you know, they're out. They're they're up three, four nights in a row without sleeping. This, that, the other. Uh, the wife's getting ready to leave them, and uh, blah blah blah. You right, you know the crash is coming, and you know it's going to be terrible. That's kind of what it feels like right now. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe Jake with Jason Walker and. Uh, supply chain disruptions, uh, it's a real deal here. We've got, I'm, I'm just going to tell you what I've got. Because that will probably make it a little bit easier. I've got 2520s at 2065. So 2520s at 2065. 
Uh, I've got about 100 more 20s, but they're going to be like 2095 because you got to go up. You know, again, the lower end stuff is disappearing around here very, very quickly. Uh, I've got 25 $5 Liberties. And they're at 585. The next available grade in Liberties, uh, there's over 200 of them. See how that works. Uh, but <laughs> you're going to be paying about 625 bucks for those. So uh, again, buy here at the low end. Buy here. You know what? You you, you got. Let's just call it about a 12 month reprieve. Very similar to 1975. Uh, really very similar uh, to 2007. We had gold run. You know, when I, I in 2003, gold was $300 and change. By, by 07, right, gold got to 1000 1050 then it went all the way back to 700 bucks. Of course, and then it went where? From 09 to 2011, bam, right? It goes to 1900. And, and I think this is kind of the, the, the same exact thing we're seeing here. We had gold creeping up in 2017 and 2018, 2019. Then it kind of shot up to 2100, boom. Get this 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 pullback and, and, and again a pullback when it didn't make sense. Same thing happened in the seventies. Same thing happened in two thousand. There was no reason for gold to pull back in 08, but it did. Same thing today. Look at today, look at all the news that went on in all of twenty twenty one. You know, in all the same headlines, right? What's wrong with gold and? And, and, you know, something's always the new gold, right? Tech stocks are the new gold. Bitcoin's the new gold. This is the new gold. There's only one thing that, that's gold, and that's gold, period. And what happens is they lie to themselves. Wall Street has become so manipulated. You know, because Wall Street really is supposed to be about price discovery. There's no real price discovery. There's fake price discovery, right? I mean, we've got uh, a Fed with a balance sheet of nine trillion of debt that they just made up out of thin air. They got interest rates at zero, right? They they they're they're manipulating the markets like the world has never seen, and, and calling it good news. How about today? Today is a great example. Uh, jobless claims today. Fell to three hundred and twenty-six thousand, which that day hey, that's good news. But there is a problem with that good news because we know tens, if thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people have been quote unquote anywhere from fired to laid off to temporarily suspended or whatever you want to call it with the COVID nineteen not getting the jab and we are speculating the other day i don't think you can file for unemployment benefits and apparently that's exactly what the case they say that uh businesses and law and lawmakers that you know obviously let's face it the federal government's leaning on businesses to, to create these mandates they said that thousands and thousands of holdouts are losing their jobs and they likely can't collect unemployment benefits, Jason. Yeah, I think that's uh, new ground they're covering. I don't know if they've uh, established whether those people can uh, collect or not because they're going to try to, you know, vilify anybody that doesn't want to get a vaccine. Kaiser, they just put 2,200 employees on, on, on unpaid leave today as an example. And they said that uh, the U.S. Department of Labor is expected to issue a rule mandating vaccine among businesses with, it, with at least the 100 people, right? That's coming. And as far as un unemployment benefits go, 
only eligible job separation allows you to collect. So in other words, if you stole from a company and you got fired, you don't get to collect. Right? If you just stop coming to work, Right? You don't get to collect. If, if, if you did nothing wrong and the company lays you off, then you get to collect. But the agency is saying that refusal to comply with the vaccine mandate is misconduct, Jason, and not eligible for unemployment benefits. Yeah, unemployment is uh, only eligible if uh, you were laid off or fired. It's, it's not for uh, a fireable offense. So that's... That's that new ground they're going to be treading on, Joe. Yep, brand, brand new ground. Uh, that if, if So, again, a very mixed bag of picture because we know thousands and tens of thousands, if not 100,000 people have been separated from the work. You're not getting unemployment. We just hired and one just in our so office here, know. Joe. Well, you know, Christina had to, had to leave her position yeah. because she wouldn't wait, get... Wait, the, someone's loss was our gain. We got a new employee at the, at the radio station because of it. 800 951 592 Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. 800 951 Once again, uh, uh, I've, got, I've got a new item. Hold on here. So I've got 25 $20 gold pieces at 2065 I can get more. But they're just going to cost another 30 to $50 a piece. So why spend more? So I got 25 at 2065. I got 25 five dollar lips. They're 585. I can get a lot more fives for six hundred and twenty five dollars. That's just what's coming. I'm I'm warning you. Silver. We haven't ran a silver item in a while. I've got fifty rolls of AU piece dollars. And Jason will tell you this. These were about 800 bucks a roll at the beginning of the summer. Yep. They're $680 right now, but I've only got 50 rolls. This is AU piece dollars. I mean, at the beginning of the summer, these things, my cost was like 37 38 bucks uh so 680 dollars uh, a roll on au piece dollars that's 34 bucks and and you know au is almost uncirculated the these things they look you know i don't want to say they look brand new but almost brand new i mean that's how good they're gonna look uh 800 951 055 Nine two. Whether you want some gold, some silver, you decide. Take the time, put them away. Uh, the the it, the specials are few and far between yep. anymore. And here's the problem: there's just not supply. Every day we go out into the marketplace, and every day we're get, being told the same thing. And part of the problem is, as there's bigger money rolls in, they buy it all. And usually when bigger money, just like Silver Eagles, someone's bought so many Silver Eagles, the bullion banks have stopped selling them. Because they're waiting on the mint to refill them so they can complete the orders. Uh, when's that going to end? I don't know. And, you know, we're already, think about this, we're already into October. We know the mint shuts down in this for December to get ready for the next year. So I'm imagining... Uh, the silver shortage that we've been seeing, it's, it's obviously going to continue, Jason, into next year. Absolutely. And, and with the gold, uh, we don't keep a lot of inventory on hand. We, we keep some because you never know who's going to call up. And uh, some people don't care about the specials. They just want to buy when they want to buy. And over the last month, especially the last three weeks, when Joe gets me a little, little bit of inventory built up, it, it, it goes right out the door as fast as it gets here. So there's been a little swell in buying, Joe, definitely. Yeah, well, yeah, there's no doubt. Listen, uh, buying here, Patriot volumes are way up again. Uh, and Jason's right. You know, as fast as we can get it in, it goes out. Uh, you know, and you, you, you just never know what the next day is going to bring. And it just seems like 
uh, you know, uh, like $10 liberties. They were everywhere a month. I mean, everywhere. Gone. Gone. And again, I can get them. But for prices that are, you know, $40, 50 $100 more than they should be. 800 951 0592. 